Okay, so today we got extremely dirty board from Toyota forklift. Uh, the board has marked at least two lost pins on the input. One is here and the other one is here. We'll have to replace them somehow. Also there are other corroded pins. And uh, plenty of junk on the board. Plenty of dirt. We'll have to clean it and inspect it. Oh dear, that board is pretty, pretty dirty. It was covered in rice again, so I just send you to the video Electronic Sushi on my channel, where I discuss usefulness of rice in electronics in depth. Still, some of that rice is spilling out on it on the table. Oh well. So to repair those pins I will have to extract the existing ones. Probably I'll just heat them up. I'll show you under the microscope how that looks. So this is the rusted pin, I'll we'll have to heat it up from the other side, extract it and, oh dear, oh dear, this is going to be fun. We'll have to unsolder everything of course, alright, so there is more to it, oh no, maybe that's just the end. Uh, rusted pin but God knows how many other rusted connections are there that doesn't look too good either no it's not too bad anyway I'll have to there's a lot of corrosion here you can see there I'll have to remove whole connector to clean everything underneath and then replace the pins and resolder them. I'll have to clean all the pins which are corroded here. Oh dear. That is ugly. There's also some missing here. Do we have any connection? Yes, we do have some connections here. No, we don't. This is just a little bit of that. That corrosion which probably deposited itself there. Well, anyway, I'll have to desolder them and then, and then examine the board very thoroughly after cleaning that. Alright, so I'll come back with a clean board. Okay, so I cleaned this part of the board, this side of the board, pretty well. Doesn't look too bad, this one is still very dirty, but what I'm doing now is just unsoldering those pins using my desoldering gun. And the technique I'm using is on a, with the small nozzle, 0.8 of the millimeter or one millimeter or something. You simply let it melt, then wobble the pin inside, 
and that lets me to suck all the solder from around the pin. <coughs> the challenge is not to touch the pad or scrape on it too hard because you can delaminate that pad from the board. <coughs> Probably this corroded bit, which doesn't want to melt. I'll have to remove it otherwise. Now, so what I have done is I desoldered all the pins and unfortunately that header is held by those four, I mean three rivets to the board. So I, I have no way of removing it otherwise. So I have to unfortunately cut it off and then, I don't know, maybe with some sort of screw or something, I will work it out later. part of the board is not important because it doesn't connect to anything on the on, on the header it just ends up in the plastic so I'm free to do that I'll do it to the other two as well and then I will fix it somehow later Okay, let's see if I can remove it. Mm. Okay, it started to move, much that's better. good, yeah. much better. Now, how the other, how the pins are performing? Those pins all are moving, okay. except for the bottom one. This one doesn't move when I do it. Okay, so I got one to worry. Those pins are all moving. Those pins are all moving, even this one, which looks sort of half full. pins are moving so I think I got only one to worry about which is this one here which yeah still has some still has some solder on the other side the first oh, yeah. one here so what I need to do I need to desolder that
that's better. So now it should let it go. Just wiggle them so they move out. Right. Okay, they were still on some glue or something. No, that is the lucky. Never mind. Okay, that is not important, like I said. I will fix it later with epoxy or something. So it looks better. But right now, what we are after is cleaning out the dashboard. I still have to. Uh, two things to remove, two pins to remove, but what I do first, I'll just suck, soak it with alcohol. And using my favorite dental pick tool, what I do, I try to grab on that. And you see, that's how it is easily removed. That lucky. I mean, it's still much faster than scraping it, especially from between the pins and so. You know, it's just it doesn't remove itself as one bit, but still, it's not too bad. So most of that dirt is on on this lacquer. Yeah, it's come away with it. Very good. So it is easy to clean. Now we will take care of, because that lack is sort of seeped through in between the legs as well, so I'll take care of those bits later. Perhaps we'll see how can I do it. Is it sharp enough? Yes, it is. Trying to cut from one side and then grab from the middle of it. And then just pull through. Okay, that sort of cleaned up this bit. Now, if the surface goes, surface goes too dry, I spray it with more alcohol. So you'll work your way right across that whole thing, yes. sealing it all off. Now, some of that, I mean, obviously it was positioned after those, part, those components no, uh, uh, were installed. You know, that it was like it, but st some are wet, it, was, it still seeped under of those components, you see? Yeah. This one is going to be fun with those many legs, but it is nothing to compare to the other one with 64 legs all around, or 128, I don't know, maybe it is even 128 legs, the processor, which is this one here. Maybe it has even 256 legs, I don't know. <laughs> this is pretty big. They, they were screwed in. I don't know. I don't think they were. How you screw and then what? It's file yeah. them out? No, that doesn't, doesn't make, doesn't sense, make any does sense. You know, who would play that? I think that they were just embedded in, uh, hot in the plastic and then uh, by machine they were simply riveted, you know, uh, like the. Uh, 
So they are just rivets embedded in the plastic uh, in the mold, and yeah. then you know, while assembled, it, they were just simply knocked on the head to flatten out. You got to look at how they manufacturing. They wouldn't take the time to because these things are mass produced, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Usually those integrated circuits are the worst to clean around the legs, but slowly but surely we'll do it. Okie dokie, alright, I think I'll stop that for now. Okay, so I have cleaned this board on both sides, looks pretty clean. There are, as you can see, several issues with it. One of them is that at some points, you know, the original conformal coating, the green paint, uh, peeled off due to the corrosion underneath. I want to show you how the corrosion looks like. You'll see, I'll try to zoom on it. You'll see this area here. Now it is discolored and some of them are darker than the others. I mean the board is not 100% clean, but clean enough for what I need now. I will be cleaning it several times still. You see this discoloration here. What I mean is the dark green, not the brownish color, which when I rub it sort of keeps on coming off here and there. But what I mean is just this, this dark discoloration. What it means is, and those, those here, that there is the corrosion under the green paint. And if that corrosion is not removed, it will keep on spreading. You can see how easily that paint flakes off. I may just clean the whole area here. It takes only a few minutes. And I'm talking about one or two to clean this whole area. And for instance, when I start off. Oh, here is more, you see. You see how easy it is taken off with green paint. I've already cleaned it here and protected that with the solder layer on it against the corrosion. No time at all.
Now you'll find that here, for instance, when I clean those traces, they were just dark green. You could see the dark green still on it. Dark, dark like, sort of, what is it, um, this dark. And when I clean that, it happened that the traces are not there anymore. You see, they, they corroded right through. And as you can see, I remove only very little of it, very little of the copper. Almost don't, don't touch it at all. Those two vias are gone. If it is not cleaned, it will keep on spreading and eating through the copper. Just to finish off, a little bit strider. So it looks more or less fine, this is just that. That may not be. Those traces are slightly discolored, but not dark green yet, so I would, wouldn't worry about touching them up. This is just a bit going on here.
Now this board was by the look from the photos I was they were sent to me by client. It was kept in open, not within any enclosure. So I want to make sure that it is thoroughly cleaned and protected. Because I, for some reason I don't believe that they will take good care of it later. Since they didn't take good care from the new. God knows what may happen to the original enclosure. It was lost somewhere in action. I just want to make sure that it is well, well protected for the years to come. Enlarging those areas in doubt so I don't miss them later when I cover them with solder. Now this one is sort of eaten up as well. I will resolder that. I mean, cover that with solder later. Yeah, I think on this side that would be all. This you see the dark color. see the darker copper yes here for instance as, as I uncover this lacquer you see The copper is oxidized already. It's not corroded yet, but since the paint doesn't stick to it very well, it may start corroding. So I'll turn it to the other side.
it. Now we'll treat it with a, an isopropyl alcohol. And a on both sides. Start covering those exposed bits and pieces with solder. Right, for that reason I will use my different soldering iron, not the hook one, but one which is, I don't remember the number of it, but the one which looks like that, mostly because it has the flat area. <coughs> so it is very good, well suited for soldering large exposed areas. I use a little bit of RA flux. For some reason that leaked, which is not good. <coughs> good. I don't usually like when my flux bottle leaks sticky clean it with alcohol with my hands as well okay Important. This is not important. What is important are those bits. So a little bit of flux, just a tiny bit. Now it's a little bit dark here, but we'll see. I just smear the flux. Virtually don't want to have a whole heap of it on the board that I'll take care of later when I'm reinstalling the connector head. Fine. So virtually what I do, I just put a tiny bit of it here and it should cover it nicely. You see I'm not interested in covering the holes. That's why I want to use only a tiny bit of it. spot I have to 
to do perhaps or maybe not something with those vias maybe not we're not connected to anything here on this side i don't think oh, it turned out to be dirt rather than dark spots which is good too much have to suck it out somehow probably with the wick it sometimes I even use the wick to spread it You see, I don't didn't put any in particular on any solder on here, but I'm just using the wick with some solder on it, and it covers it very well. side can't see anything else so now we'll use this Clean. Keep on probably telling this in every episode, but I'll repeat it here again. I'm very particular on cleaning all the flux from the board. Well, how the flux works? 
is it dissolves the metal oxide. Therefore, cleaning the surface to accept the solder, among other things. But metal oxide, also while it is on the surface, it slows down or even prevents creation of corrosion. That's why when you have the rusted steel, it's all red, uh, the corrosion process is slowed down to that point that actually it can stay red for years, not deteriorating a lot, unless this oxide, metal oxide layer is disturbed. So when it is disturbed, scratched or otherwise removed, it allows oxygen and water again to the mine surface, creating more corrosion, more metal oxide. And if it is kept on being removed, it will let's say if rust flakes occasionally from the metal exposing bare metal it will keep corroding so when you leave the flux on a metal it will keep on removing or dissolving any oxide which forms and therefore it will promote even corrosion unless it covers the surface entirely separating it from air or oxygen in particular and moisture or water however flux being very sticky promotes collection of dust and the dust in turn attracts moisture so if the flux happen, happens to crack just a bit somewhere in its surface Moisture can penetrate underneath and if enough oxygen is there it could keep spreading even under the flux and the flux would even keep on accelerating it then. So, and also for different reasons, I prefer to clean my boards very well. It's easier, much easier to spot any uh, faults or missed parts. And it looks so much more professional after all. And especially when the board belongs to say device which works in the open air like this forklift with this board exposed to the elements at all times at least how it was shown on the photos and the state it was in with a lot of mud on it and other that in such a case i always protected by spraying the layer of protective lacquer with the flux underneath it's not a good idea maybe it would still stick and form the cover but it would look horrible well, my boards always look almost like brand new when I finish with them. 
many clients co actually uh, commented on it over the years that my boards look pristine and that actually adds to the professional outlook an impression that you're doing things professionally And when you make the habit of cleaning the flux from the board, it doesn't take long. It's, it's so natural that you don't think about it. You just, you just stop treating this as a core. You're just treating it as a normal part of maintenance. helps you see when there is no flux and the spots that you may actually miss and when you're cleaning the board you still go over it and you see like in this instance it's still fine pieces of that all like it not being removed properly So going again over the whole board and cleaning it, it is beneficial sometimes. There were times when, by doing that, I thought that I fixed the board already, before testing it, of course. And then while cleaning it, I found another spot where, let's say, capacitor, like SMD capacitor or transistor, was broken or hanging on by the thread. Literally, I, I had a board where two, two transistors were attached to the board only by one leg, and two legs were flapping in the breeze. They simply separated from the original due to vibrations, I guess. That was the car air conditioning board. You know, due to vibrations, probably they just the, the solder joint cracked and they separated from it. So I found one component which I had doubts about, so I replaced it. And before I even had the chance to test it, I found the real problem. those two transistors 
connecting only ver very intermittently wouldn't make for a good functioning system. Still missed some bits here. You see how useful the claying is. I just discovered that I missed some bits covering with salt. tiny micro bit through those two vias to see on the other side where they come through. For this I will use tiny 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 drill bit on my hand drill like this one is far too thick of course so you have to replace this one they're very very tiny which I keep at, at the end of here with the spare heads this one may be also too big I may use even smaller oh yeah need to use really really tiny this I have to bring the box of my tiny drill bits I have as small as 0.4 of the millimeter which may be what is just needed As you can see, I'm going to start with this tiny, tiny bit. See if it is any good. That is still, this is the smallest I have, but it's still oh, just my dirt. All right. going to be if I'm able to hold it in this little chuck yes I will now see so I'm going to soldered away on both sides I don't care too much about retaining the via connecting pipe inside to be expected I guess to some extent where did it go didn't even go to the other side I think I just moved it to the side and that's how it broke hmm. that's not too good well this one is not going to the reminder of it is not going to work that well. I need to remove this one from here, so I'll need to use thicker drill bit after all. Okay, I use a 0.6 of a millimeter.
I'll try to drill the f first the second hole and see when it comes out. I'm not pushing it almost at all. I'm just I'll try to keep it as straight as possible. I want to break this one. Yes, I know it takes a little bit of time to do it. Okay, so I drilled the holes a little bit bigger than I expected. My camera keeps on swinging on me. see this hole here is a little bit bigger than I expected and on the, to the side because the drill bit which broke was inside but that's okay it doesn't worry me too much what I will do I'll just pull, push through the wire this is the that first hole which is to the side push the wire. I'm just using speaker wire for it. That will do nicely. The hole is far too big for it but I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. It will work regardless okay what I want to do just want to lift that a little bit which I cleaned already yeah, something like that come on right turn on my soldering iron find my flux which is here just tiny bit of it, that'll do. A little bit of solder, that's it. Using my favorite dental pick to hold it in place and solder it. Solid enough. Okay. Cut this off. And that little bit comes onto here. That's close enough. Okay. Right. A little bit of flux, tiny bit like so. A little bit of solder. Oh, it's still enough on the tip.
concept like that. I want to scrape a little bit of the enamel from the wire. The rest will burn, but just so it can initialize. Okay. Just like that. It'll do. Just to see if it holds all right to the board. Pick up that wire and break it off here. Yes, it holds well to the board. Okay. So one is done. Good afternoon, all electronics repairs. Jerry is speaking. Okay. So, a little bit of solder. Don't like when tools escape from me. thick soldering wire. It's one millimeter but just fine. Don't feel like bothering reaching for point eight point six of the millimeter soldering wire. Come on. of it to see how it is soldered to the board and it's soldered pretty solidly that's it clean it and those two holes are done
Okay, now what worries me next is those two years. Because what happens is when I drill through them, obviously they are here for a reason and right in the middle of that big trays they are also for a reason let's see I don't care I don't feel like changing the drill bit anymore uh, maybe my need to So I'm going to use my Dremel with that little chuck. Now it wobbles a, a little, so what I do, I just first put that in the hole and then turn it on. Come on, where is the switch? Here is the switch. Here. So I need to connect those two and also need to do the same thing here. This is exactly big trace, two holes. So to do those two holes as well. Put that in a hole and then turn on the drill bit on the Dremel. Then hold it well. So those are two holes here, so obviously that trace had to be connected to the other one. So I have to connect and why two of them? Because for the uh, big current coming through, that's why you got the big trace coming into here and they both come to this capacitor. Right, so what I'll do, I'll just quickly clean both sides. I mean, the other side is already soldered, so that's fine. Okay. This pad is connected by three vias for the large current, I mean relatively large current, larger than the other traces. to do now is just to put probably a little bit thicker wire thicker than before it and then go 
goes like this. Put it back here. Try to put it back again to create a really good connection. Not sure if I will be able to if the hole is big enough. Yes, I can. on this side, almost good. Okay. On this side looks perfectly good. If it doesn't go through, it doesn't go through. of the enamel.
It's absolutely fine, but it doesn't look too good. Do I care how does it look? Yes, I do. A little bit of pride. This is all right here. This is a little bit too much here, but that's okay. I'm not sure if I'll be able to fill in that hole. Because on the outside it doesn't have much to hold on to. I can only try. To do that I'm not going to push on here. I'm going to have that solder blob on my soldering tool and then just fill it in like so if I'm going to melt it that hole will appear again see doesn't matter how far how much I hold it it's not going to cover it very well because it has nothing to touch here okay I think I'll leave it like that It's only visual thing and that is going to be covered by epoxy anyway because what I'm going maybe not up to, uh, maybe we'll see how that goes my plan is after I install all the legs back because those legs are rusting quite a lot being out in the open and they are very delicate and it's many many of them I'm going to attach the connector block to the board. It used to be attached with rivets. I'm not going to be able to rivet it back and cut off the rivets to take it out. So I'm going to attach it with epoxy. And to, for that, I'm going to build up the box around it with the tape and fill in layers with the epoxy to cover the entirely the legs to prevent them from rusting reinforcing them and make it very very solid okay so I'll leave the board for now i think it is done and now i'll concentrate on on the connected block 